What's up, everybody? Welcome into the Next Pats podcast. I'm Phil Perry. We're coming at you kind of live from the Indianapolis International Airport. We tried to record a podcast before we left the Indiana Convention Center. My last day at the NFL Scouting Combine on Friday had some technical difficulties. Whose fault was it? Yours truly, as usual. But we're here now. We got some internet access. We got a microphone. We got a computer. Let's give the people a little bit of a pod here. And the reason why I say that is because I want you all to experience what I experienced today in our back and forth with Drake May. Now, Drake May, 21 years old, University of North Carolina. Big, tall, young, dynamic, athletic quarterback with a strong arm who can, quote unquote, make every throw. Lots to like there. Lots that he's getting dinged for, especially in media circles, I would say over the course of the last few weeks. And I understand it because he can be scattershot at times. He can play a little bit too much hero ball, it looks like, at times. And NFL scouts and coaches would acknowledge that as well. One thing that I learned this week that I found interesting was he still has a lot of love from NFL people, and he is still considered a top three pick. Caleb Williams, the presumed number one overall selection, Drake May, and Jaden Daniels, all worthy of that number three choice that the Patriots have in their pocket right now. So they could sit there, wait for whatever quarterback falls to them, and in my opinion, and in the opinions of many league evaluators that I spoke to this week and that I've spoken to really over the last few weeks, the consensus is those guys are worthy of that spot, Drake May included. Even if he was a little inconsistent last year at UNC. One thing that I found out this week was that there was a scheme change. They changed coordinators at North Carolina, and it wasn't just the talent that went out of the offensive huddle at UNC. A Josh Downs receiver who was drafted last year, undersized but really athletic player, um, that gets highlighted a lot. Well, May lost his best receiver, and numbers weren't as good, wasn't quite as efficient. What I've heard is that it really was more of a scheme change issue and that the offense itself was a little messy and May's game suffered because of it. And did he make mistakes? 100% he did. And were there easy throws for him to make that he missed at times for a variety of reasons? No doubt. But the talent is so special. The high-end play is so special. The 2022 tape is so good and better and really the better indicator of what he might be as a pro according to two coaches that I spoke to yesterday that you can understand why he's still considered a top three pick. This is what the league is doing right now. Of course, they're going through 2023, but they're going back to 2022 as well. And they're seeing a rare talent with good size at the most important position in the sport. That has value, and it might be the reason why Drake May is the New England Patriots quarterback come the fall. I should just reiterate, now that I'm about to be headed back to Boston, After a week of being with these people that are making these decisions across the league, my expectation is the Patriots will use that third pick on a quarterback. Would I be stunned if through the process they found out they weren't completely in love with one of these guys and they'd rather trade down and maybe there's a veteran out there that they feel like they can acquire at a reasonable cost? Maybe, maybe. But as things stand now, my expectation is – And really the expectation of those in the league that are watching the Patriots from afar, there'd be a lot of surprise folks if the Patriots did not take either Jaden Daniels or Drake May with that third overall pick. But let's focus on May today. We spoke to Daniels as well, and we want to hit you with that audio in the near future here too. But May, to me, stood out in that he was as advertised. What I've been told all week was this guy was really crushing his interviews. Now let's have some perspective here. These are first impressions. These are about 20-minute meetings. The way it was described to me by one person was a lot of times guys are late because they're at other meetings and teams are holding them, and so they end up being late to yours. So that takes a couple minutes off the clock. And he spent a couple minutes just sort of making sure everybody's hand has been shaken in the room because you're a quarterback and you you want to project a certain air about you. Uh And so by the time you're sitting down, you're actually getting into it. The conversations are really more like 15 minutes. And so you might be sitting at home or in your car, wherever you are right now, saying, well, what can you really 
glean from a 15 minute interview with one of these kids. I can tell you people in the league take a lot from these, even though they would also acknowledge these are just first impressions. But with the quarterback position specifically, and the quarterback position especially, I should say, how you change the energy in a room when you walk in is something they pay attention to. And again, that may sound silly. It's real for a lot of these people. Can you communicate? How do you communicate? Can you show in a brief period of time that you know what you're talking about from a football standpoint? Are you, and this again will sound simple, but it's an issue for some. Are you answering the questions asked? Or are you repeating rehearsed lines that you came into the meeting with? And that's what you're comfortable talking about. And so if you get something thrown at you that you're not really prepared for, do you fall back on something that the team doesn't even really care about hearing in that moment? And so for Drake May, in his first impression, to be as impressive as he was at 21 years old, that to me speaks volumes. It's cliche to talk about having a quote-unquote alpha at that position and the importance of having somebody who can command a room at that position because we've seen players who don't necessarily fit that cookie cutter mold have a lot of success in the league. But when you do have it, there are league people who pay attention to it. And I know Drake may impress the Patriots when he met with them, had a formal interview with them in Indi in Indianapolis this week. And it was in part because of that energy, because of his intelligence, because of how the room felt when he walked in and started interacting with people. And so I think you can get a little taste of that now. That's why I want to play his entire back and forth with reporters today because you get a sense for what I'm being told when it comes to the energy that he's bringing to the table, the personality that he's bringing to the table. So are there questions about his game? No question about it. Would you rather have Jaden Daniels come into New England than Drake May? Maybe. And there certainly would be an argument for that. And there are plenty of people who believe Jaden Daniels is much closer to Caleb Williams in terms of talent and projectability uh, than I think a lot of people in public spaces are willing to give him credit for. He is that electric. And we have some some interesting nuggets from the combine that I learned about Jaden Daniels that we'll share on a future episode. But he is polished enough as a passer to more than get by and be more than worthy of the second or third overall. So you might rather have him. But with everything Drake May brings to the table from a physical standpoint, from a personality standpoint, uh, and even from a football IQ standpoint, what I've been told is, yes, yes, and yes, he would be worthy of that pick. Let's hit you with a little bit of that Drake May personality. Dare I say, big Drake energy. Right now, let's get to the entire back and forth with the media horde in Indy. No, there's a lot of great players out there. I think they're the best in the world right now. It's my home. So watch them every Sunday. It's fun to watch. So just being out here and getting to meet with some of these guys and uh, being around them, just getting to know them, is, you know, it's fun for me. Yeah, yeah, I was really impressed with them. You know, Coach Mayo, you know, first congratulated him too. Um, you know, come anytime a new head coach, you know, it was a, a pretty cool experience. So just being in there and um, New England's, you know, obviously a great sports town and meet with them. So I thought it went well. I think, um, you know, New England's a great spot and all these teams are, yeah, you know, I got a great spot. You had a chance to reflect on last season. What did you make of it? Yeah, shoot. I think you know one of the most explosive you know offenses in 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 the, in the country. I think uh, you know start off six and zero and kind of one of those things where uh, you know some games where I could have made some more plays at the end to win some more games. Um, but at the same time, you know kind of learning experience and uh, you know had some some big time some big time offensive games. And um, you know at the end of the day, uh, should just go back out there and um, you know take it one play at a time and you know, just confidence in myself. Drake, what were your impressions of the Broncos and the meeting with Sean? Yeah, it was awesome meeting with Coach Payton. I think anytime you got you know one of you know the great offensive minds in there, you know meeting with him was was pretty cool. And Davis Webb, um, he seemed right off the bat, you know, seemed like a you know he kind of you know one of the great quarterback coaches you could play for. And uh, just fun to be in there with those guys. And um, you know, got a great experience and got you know Javante Williams is a Carolina guy out there in Denver. So. Yeah, no doubt. I think, you know, also, you know, the Pac-12 after dark is always on late. So, you know, I'm done with my game. But uh, anytime, you know, Caleb got to know him throughout high school and uh, being in the same class and just rooting for him. Um, such a great guy. You know, got to see him here again. Uh, anytime you're rooting for guys like that, you're rooting for him. You know, I think anytime 
Um, you get to see you know quarterbacks around the country, you know, pulling against them. I don't think that's right. So you can pull for guys because I, you know, I genuinely you know, enjoy and uh, enjoy being around Caleb. You think there'll be a little bit of competitiveness though at the NFL levels? Oh, always. Yeah. You ain't, hey, when it gets in between the lines, it's a different story. But you know, out here, um, you always you know just you know rooting for them and you know checking up on them, asking how they're doing. Can you talk about your relationship with Mitchell Trubisky? Yeah, yeah, Mitchell. Yeah, yeah, Mitch has been around. Uh, came back to North Carolina a few times, and uh, he's been great. You know, I think he hit me up before the season, um, and just you know said best of luck. And uh, you know, he's a great, you know, great mentor anytime. You know, Carolina Blue, you know, quarterback fraternity. You know, just try to stick together. What would you say to the Bears fans that you know yeah, he's a lightning rod conversation in Chicago? Obviously, what would you say to the Bears fans following the footsteps that he would come to Chicago? Yeah, you know, Mitch. I think. Uh, we had some great years in Chicago, you know, especially that one specific year. I remember making the playoffs and then playing well. So, you know, I think a lot of people, these, you know, they analyze based off the helmet. You know, I think we're different players and, and different people. But at the same time, you know, big fan of Mitch. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Eli's, you know, big fan. I think you know, Eli would probably say, you know, he's probably seen me too much. I've been following around. And so uh, it's always on Zooms. I think the biggest thing is just being a sponge, you know, soaking it all in. And I don't have all the answers, and I don't know it all, just being up there with Eli. And uh, like I said, David Morris training with him down there in Alabama. Uh, he was his backup at Ole Miss. So just uh, kind of the small world of connections and uh, just trying to soak it all up. Yeah, Eli, just be myself. Just enjoy it. Don't be somebody I'm not. And uh, just, you know, at the, same, at the end of the day, don't, you know, give the NFL, you know, too much, you know, you know spotlight or, or credit. You know, it's just, you know, go out there and play ball. Yeah, it was, it was good in there. You know, meeting with um, you know, Coach Dave Ball, big fan of him. You know, offensive mind, one of the best. Um, so, just getting there, getting to know those guys. You know, know Mr. Shane. So, uh, it, was, it was good in there. Yeah, that's a good call out. Um, yeah, because I'm being from Charlotte, you know, Myers Park is, uh, one of the best decisions I made, you know, uh, attending that high school, uh, one of the best high schools out there. Uh, playing there really changed my football path. Um, going in there and um, kind of my sophomore year and being the guy quarterback. And, you know, from there, just um, kind of you know, things started off there, start, the start of my journey. And uh, looking forward to getting back to Charlotte and seeing some of those guys. Yeah. Oh, it's awesome. Um, Sam, you know, I played little league ball with Sam when I was, you know, in first grade, sixth grade playing tackle football. Sam was the quarterback and I was playing uh, probably on the sideline clapping for him. Um, you know, but it's, it's really a small world from Charlotte. So many guys, you know, Daniel Jones and, um, you know, Sam Howell, all these guys, you know, really, I don't think people give enough credit to Charlotte. Great area of football and uh, just North Carolina, I think it's a little bit slept on. Yeah, just preparing. I think the biggest thing is learning how to prepare, you know, like a pro. I mean, I'm always, obviously don't have it figured out yet. I still had to go to class in between, you know, practice and uh, meeting time. So I think that'll be a little bit different. But also uh, just making plays with my feet, knowing when to uh, check it down to the running back too. Be patient. I think guys try to, you know, drop eight on me and, and test my patience. So just be able to, you know, take the check down and uh, move the chains. Great. Yeah, I think, um, you know, something that, you know, I think it would you know be an advantage and something you know there's always two sides to it. I think it could be a you know a huge help. You see guys where it works out, um, like Jordan Love, and you see instances where going in like CJ right away is uh, you know can be successful. So whatever they think, you know I'm ready. You know for both ways, ready to go in there, and compete to be the starter. Obviously, going to have that mindset either way. But at the same time, I know um, you know these guys you know you know get they get paid a lot of money to make these decisions. Hey, Carol, how much did it, how much did it help them to sit for that? Oh, it was huge, you know, learning how to, you know, prepare, you know, learn how to prepare, learn how to you know, create relationships and handle all the media. You know, Sam was in the spotlight, um, you know, one of the elite guys in college football. So it was fun to, you know, sit behind Sam. He's become one of my best friends. Yeah, favorite favorite family memory. I think um, kind of kind of my brother Luke. You know, the shot he hit against Kentucky kind of put, you know, put us on notice back in Memphis and in, uh, in that year. But you know, really just. Uh, you know, being the youngest of you know, four boys, you know, three older brothers, three of my best friends, got a lot of memories. Yeah, with Washington, I think they were first, you know, Coach Quinn, um, you know, he's a great, you know, kind of kind of clicked right off the bat. Um, he's a great, you know, great guy and, um, you know, great coach, shooting the stuff he's done defensively with the Cowboys over the past year has been pretty special. Um, so meeting in there and, um, you know, Coach um, you know, Coach Pritchard, Coach uh, recruited me in high school from Stanford, so got to know him a little bit. And uh, you know, Coach Kingsbury knows, you know, my office winner from college, so got a lot of connections. 
Yeah, the Bears suit. Um, you know, great, great, great sports town. Um, Chicago's about as good as it gets. So just got in there and let them know who I am. And I don't think they knew much about me, and uh, just show them, you know, you know, what I got and you know who I am, and, and kind of speak, um, you know, speak on some of the plays and some of the tape. Yeah, just a competitor. I think you know, just a winner. You know, I think if there's something where I can do it all, I can play inside the pocket. You know, I can play, um, you know, outside the pocket, make plays with my feet. You know, pick up first downs on the run, um, win intelligently. You know, I feel like a smart kid. So, um, just try to, you know, one of those things where, you know, I feel like I can, you know, kind of try to do it all. Yeah. For sure, you know, anytime they're in zone, let it rip, man. They find the open area and let it rip. You know, I pride myself in making making all the throws, and I feel like I can. And uh, you know, from whether hash, whatever hash in college, the hashes are a little bit wider, so some of the longer throws. And um, I think these defenses try to test me, and I'm ready for it. Yeah, just uh, my ability to you know to connect with people, my ability to create relationships, and uh, just connect with you know all types of different people. I think that's the biggest thing with me. I'm not going to be a guy and going in there, um, you know, as a rookie, just you know, starting to you know yell and scream and be a leader right off the bat, kind of show my work ethic and earn the respect of the guys, and then from then, uh, just kind of you know grow in and more as a both flew back. What inspired me to play football? Uh, that's a great question, actually. Um, you know, I think my dad, my dad played quarterback in North Carolina. Shoot, you know, about all of us went to North Carolina. So uh, just, you know, kind of there and, um, you know, growing up, you know, my three older brothers, none of them were quarterbacks. So I figured, you know, the last one, how about it be me? Um, so just my dad, he's been, you know, the guy watched me throw my whole life. Yeah, I think yeah, that's one of the toughest things, you know, showing as, as a quarterback, you know, you're not touching practice. Um, you know, people think that you don't lift as hard because you're not, you know, dump, um, barbell benching and people kind of call you out for it. So the biggest thing for me was, you know, my, you know, you know running. I think, uh, you know, sometimes I, I, I hurdled or try to break tackles and some of the hurdle stuff I need to, you know, shy away from to, to stay healthy. But uh, I think at the same time it shows some of the competing. One of the kind of the best, um, you know, impacts I felt like I had was, you know, after, you know, I get, ran for first down and you know, made somebody, you know, made somebody miss or tried to hurdle a guy. Those guys loved that. And it kind of my, that was kind of my way. Say it again. Sorry, some of the guys are yelling at me. Yeah, with the Falcons, shoot, Atlanta, I was really impressed. You know, obviously T.J. Yates, you know, North Carolina guy, the quarterback coach. Um, so that, that was my first interview of the of the combine here. So it made it easy, you know, being with the North Carolina guy. And uh, you know, Coach Morris is, uh, you know, congratulating him. He was you know, a new head coach. So I thought Atlanta with Atlanta went well. Yeah, um, shoot, yeah, that's that's a that's a lot to live up to now with uh, with Tom. So uh, one of the best, one of the goats. Um, Coach Christian was my quarterback. Um, you know, kind of he helped with uh, the quarterbacks in North Carolina. He coached um, Tom back in uh, in Tampa. So just got to you know watch some old films, some quarterback drills, how consistent he was, and and how he handled himself and took care of his body. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the biggest thing. You know, I think the, the biggest measurement for quarterback is, uh, you know, wins and losses. And I think there's some, some games at the end of the games where I, I could have done there and make a few more plays um, to, you know, help us, uh, you know, impact the win, the win column. But at the same time, um, you know, there's not, I wouldn't redo anything. I put it all out there and left it all out there. What do you feel like the Bears know a lot about you? What do you think you mean about that? Oh no! Just haven't haven't met with him, haven't seen him. Um, you know, I wasn't at the Senior Bowl or any of that, so I'm kind of one of the younger. I'm, I'm a junior, so they probably haven't you know seen me for as long. But uh, no, they were all you know, all of them at practice and at some games. So yeah, for sure. Um, you know, no doubt. You know, watching you know Chicago. You know, Cole Komet is you know a great tight end, and you got DJ Moore who played in. I was a big Panthers fans growing up, so watching DJ and uh, you know the ability to you know play in those cold weather games and uh, you know always affects like Chicago. Always got a great defense. So. Yeah, um, just enjoy high school football. Some of the best times of my life. You know, my senior year um, of football in high school got taken away because of COVID, um, and I miss that. You know, miss playing on the lights on Friday nights, and um, just to, you know, to outwork everybody. You don't got to post everything on social media like you're working hard. Um, just working the, you know, working silence, working the dark. Any event for the NFL Combine? Ooh, I like that. Um, let's do a three-point contest, basketball. I think basketball kind of goes into play with, you know, being an athlete and being able to shoot the rock. Birds are real? Uh, no, nah, I took a conspiracy class in, in college, so uh, I talked a little bit about that, but no, nah, I, think, I think they are. 
Yeah. Um, awesome, awesome moment. Um, you know, for, for my family. You know, all the all the hard work and watching my three older brothers do their thing, and uh, now getting my chance to. I've uh, been so supportive. I've got brothers all over the country. Uh, I got one brother back home living with me in North Carolina. I got one brother playing you know basketball overseas in Japan. So we got it all covered, and uh, they've been so supportive and uh, just a just a just a sports family. We love to compete and uh, you know just just get after each other. Says he looks for artists or surgeons when it comes to quarterback play. How would you describe? Yeah, I think that's that's a good way to put it. I think um, you know, try to be both. I think be a surgeon at the you know in two minute drill at the end of the game. Um, I think I showcased a little bit of that. You know, hit check downs and kind of kind of win mentally. Also, be you know an artist. I think you know, come to that is you know making plays, making little plays outside the pocket, and uh, doing my own thing when when something's not open. And I think I can do both of those. Do you think you're trying to find a good balance of yeah. The the yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Find a balance. Always you know trying to improve and. Sometimes I feel like I, I moved a little bit too much in there because I may have some small moves, but at the same time, making plays with my feet is one of my you know, best abilities. Yeah, this past year, I think Syracuse, the way I threw it around, um, was awesome. And, and in 2022, Wake Forest, um, shoot, you know, I feel like I was one of those, you know, it's just one of those days you wake up, you know, you're, you're, you're in warm ups, you're throwing it well. you're taking the top of the draft, those rosters are speaking as how would you be? How would you handle a situation where you're in a huddle where uh, there may be some adverse situations early? In your yeah, uh, just being able to handle it. I think uh, just having find ways, you know, outside of football to have that um, kind of thing to fall on, um, whereas my family or um, you know my faith and just having that um, with me is, is huge for me. I'm um, not you know taking it and uh, still at the same time showing them competing and uh, not being okay with you know. Um, and some adversity to, to not be on the right side of it. Oh yeah, anytime you're watching them, you know, watching Josh Allen, um, I think, you know, watching the hurdles is pretty cool. Watching Josh, I did a little bit of that. I never cleared somebody like he did, but I tried to. Um, and watching Herbert, the way he moves, and uh, kind of arm strength, both those guys' arms can, can make all the throws, and I strive, my, strive myself from doing that. You, you operate a lot of pistol. I'm curious, you know, what kind of like about doing that, and how that's kind of helping you translate. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, we did just some outside zone stuff and uh, you know some RPO stuff and did some play action off of it. So uh, you know, I think you know the biggest thing about college is not many under center you know you know offenses anymore. So being able to do that, adjust to it, and you know with their back to the defense is uh, you know eye and safeties after you you know your, your play action stuff. So I think that translates to the NFL, like you said. Yeah, one of my best friends. Um, you know, Sam is uh, shoot. He's been a mentor to me in college, and uh, it's one of those things where um, there's a lot bigger problems out there in the world than you know being with one of your best friends in the quarterback room. So I think um, you know it's not it's not awkward for us, and it's just a just business. We're good. Appreciate. It. So there you have it. I think for Patriots fans, especially at this position, finding out who these guys are as people is part of the fun of this process. And if you're listening to this podcast, you like the process. So hopefully you enjoyed that back and forth again. Early in the morning, late in the week, combine week. Um, let's just say media folks probably not their best selves in those moments. Uh, but I think people had fun going back and forth with him, and it seemed like he was enjoying himself as well. Certainly comfortable in his own skin, which again is something that you hear about from teams that were able to meet with him this week. All right, that'll do it for this edition of the Next Pats podcast from the Indianapolis International Airport. Thanks so much for listening. Thanks so much for following our content all week here on NBCSportsBoston.com. We had a story for you every day from Indy, um, Patriots-centric stuff uh, that has a lot of information that I've been able to glean over the course of the last several days and weeks. This this draft thing, you guys know it. It's a year-long endeavor. It's a lot of fun. Had a lot of fun in Indy. Thanks so much for listening all week, and we'll talk to you very soon with more info from the combine.